Hello and welcome to jasonnewland.com My name is Jason Newland This is Let Me Bore You to Sleep Please only listen to this when you can safely close your eyes And Andre just made a really weird noise. Which was strange. He just went, mm-hmm. like that. It's almost, almost like a, an imitation. Like a, I guess a, a ferret imitating a train. Mm-hmm. Like that. So today, or this evening, or early afternoon, or late afternoon, yeah, just before five, about half four, I went to the pet shop, and because I'm having this flea issue with Andre, and I've had him four years, literally this month, four years, and never had a problem with fleas ever until the last couple of weeks. And I've took him to the vets, got you know stuff to put on his uh, on the back of his neck, uh, some liquid. I put some more on yesterday, last night. And I put this flea talcum powder thing on the carpet in the living room that's supposed to get rid of them. It's like a shaken back kind of thing. I'm not sure if it puts the freshness back. So I I thought, and I, basically I was, <laughs> this is just grim. I was on my bed and a flea jumped on my on my arm. I was like, oh man, this is wrong. And there's not lots of them. He's a little, he's, you know, I check him every day. There's only a small amount of them. And he's only tiny. He's only a little thing himself. So, but they, I think they've kind of, spread around the flat a bit so I went to the pet shop and I said please Mrs Pet Shop what what can I can you help me she said I can help you providing you never call me Mrs Pet Shop again I said okay what 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 is your name she said, I'm Mrs. Pet Shop Discount Store. I said, oh, okay, sorry. So she said, I basically, I don't like looking for things. I don't know if it's a laziness. It might be lazy, but I prefer to just go directly to the item that I am looking for that I'm you know literally going there to purchase and although it's not like a huge shop it is a discount store where they you can buy in bulk for people with I don't know why I'm thinking horses but you know I guess you know people that breed dogs or have big dogs or that like to buy, you know, there's a car park, people go in and stock up probably for months at a time. Now, I don't do that, not for Andre. I do that for me. I get deliveries of stuff and I've got about 20 cans of deodorant and about probably 30, 40 bars of soap I'd like to stock up with stuff like that. 
and also when I buy him uh, his wet food, the cat food, I I like to get you know maybe five, four or five boxes, so he's got enough for a few weeks. I don't put it all out all at once, and he's not he's not like a dog in the sense of like a dog will just eat it all. Not all dogs, I know, but some dogs will just. If you put twice as much food out, they'll eat all of it. He doesn't do that. He eats when he's hungry, and that's the only time he eats. He doesn't eat for pleasure, unless it's chocolate, or it's something that I'm eating. I mean, I literally could be eating stinging nettles and he'd want them give me those stinging nettles daddy please let me have a taste I just want a taste just a little taste and oh if it's in my mouth forget about it he wants it so this is in my mouth that's it he just it's, he's a face he's a strange one so I go into the pet shop and my aim was to buy some more of the talcum, the, you know, the flea powder that I can put onto the carpet. But it does say, don't put it on your bed. So I'm thinking, that's where the flea popped up. I'm constantly checking the bed in and looking for stuff, but he likes to, he loves being on the bed. And he looks so damn cute when he's curled up on the bed and asleep he looks so cute and I love I love lying down on the bed with him and sort of giving him a cuddle and stuff it's kind of one of the highlights of my life so I don't want to take that away I could just by closing the bedroom door obviously get him out first otherwise it and it doesn't work and then he wouldn't be able to go in there and spread his fleas but the thing is it's getting colder weather so the fleas will kind of diminish outside but now it's getting to the point where it's putting the heating on so the temperature is going to increase inside Anyway, I've not seen any fleas in the living room since I did the the powder. So I went into a pet shop and I didn't want to look around everything because there's, there's not really anything in there for ferrets apart from ferret food. There's two different types of ferret food, dry food. One is an expensive, well, it's not expensive, but not when you consider how long it lasts. But one is about £12, and the other one is about £6. So one's in a big fancy bag, and, you know, the other one is in a see-through bag. And I kind of alternate. He seems to be happy with Eva, and it's good for his teeth because it helps to uh, clean his teeth. It's good for fiber and vitamins and stuff like that that you won't get from the cat food, um, and it just helps his digestive and you know all that stuff. So I don't want to be looking through the dog food or the bones for dogs or you know squirrel grooming kits I don't want to go for all that stuff alligator leads you know so I said to the lady I said to her, I think she remembered me um, not I don't mean she remembered me from calling her by the wrong name I mean she remembered me from a previous time that I had visited 
that establishment. And I said, oh. She said, what? I said, oh, just. She said, have you been eating garlic? I said, no, 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 just, just my natural breath. She said, oh, how lucky. And I said, oh, I need some something flea. Can you just point me to the flea stuff? And she pointed me to the the same powder that I had before for the carpet. And I said to her, is there anything better? And she said, well, there's lots of things better than flea powder. A nice meal out, a holiday abroad, falling in love. I said, no, I don't mean, I mean, is there anything better for getting rid of the fleas? And she said, well, we do have bombs. <laughs> I thought, what? I said, oh no, I've just, I think I've walked into the wrong shop. She said, no, no, these uh, canisters which let off uh, this spray which fumigates the room. And she said, it's not really ideal if you've got a pet there with you. I said, oh no, it's okay. Because uh, I've got a little gas mask, a ferret gas mask. So I said, it's fine. She said, have you really? I said, no. She said, why did you say that then? I said, no, it's because I'm making a recording. I like to say silly things sometimes. She said, oh, I was wondering why you were holding that microphone. I said, yeah, I know. And I said, basically, it's Andre, my ferret. You've met him before. I can move him out of the room. I can close the door, do each room separately, and then leave it. The idea is you you set it off, you close the door, close the windows, or close the windows first, then close the door. Because if you close the door, how do you get to the windows? Unless you close the door from the inside then you're stuck in there well you're not stuck in there unless you've locked it no i have go and have a lock so I closed the windows closed the door and I left it for I probably got home just after five six seven eight nine ten eleven 12, probably about 6 or 7 hours I left it and then I went in there maybe 5 hours and I opened the windows up wide oh that's it, yeah I left it probably about 5 hours then I went in made sure Andre didn't follow me I got crept in very quiet and uh, I opened the windows wide, proper wide, to let the fumes out, let the air in, and then I closed the door again. And I left it for a few hours, probably another three or four hours. And literally, and it's now 2.27 in the morning, probably about an hour ago, I went in there and I closed, I didn't close the windows completely, uh, this, two of them are locked open, so they've got like a gap and the other one's just wide open, but I drew the curtains closed and I've got the bedroom door open so the air can flow between, you know, in and out, just to make sure that the, the air's, you know, okay. So I'm hoping, I'm hopey, hopey, hoping that 
this is all going to be sorted now in the bedroom now on the instructions of this canister this bomb thing it said you activate it you put it on the floor you activate it aim it away from your face <laughs> which kind of made me laugh a little bit because uh, I was just about to aim it at my face I put it on the floor and I was activating it but it what but it was just spraying whenever I pushed down on it. And it said on the canister that it all gets released all in one go. I suppose like a wee, you know when you do a wee, just it all kind of just gets released, you don't don't save some up for later, just all gets released. And it wasn't spraying in my face, but I, it was the fumes were getting to me a little bit. I was, I had a, a t-shirt over my face, which meant I couldn't see what I was doing. I kept pushing down and pushing down. I realised it was. Uh, I was on a different part of the floor. It's in the wrong part of the floor, so I'm just pressing down on a shoe. So like, oh it's over there, so I go back down. I wasn't pressing hard enough because when I pressed a little bit harder it clicked. I suppose a bit like a hand grenade. And it did just like whoosh, and I quickly get out of there close the door and I think it kind of just kind of ejaculated it, no not ejaculated it exited eject, ejected that's why the word I was looking for ejected everything out and I'm really hoping that the bedroom's now sorted Now the question is, because I've got three more canisters, because I bought two packs, and both they had two canisters in each. So I'm thinking I'll do one canister in the living room, and maybe one in the hallway as well. So I'm thinking, thinking of doing that tonight when I go to bed take Andre his food and his water and put it all in the bedroom with me keep him in there with me while I'm asleep and before I go to sleep let the canister off in the living room close the door and the windows and then do the same in the hallway thing is if I do that when I wake up I'm going to need to have to air out the living room so open all the windows and leave it aired before I go back in there which means I don't know, I'd be sitting in my bedroom for a couple of hours, which doesn't really appeal to me. I like to sleep in there, but other than that, I don't really spend any time in the bedroom other than if I'm playing with Andre, because he likes to play on the bed and bite me and run around and get all excited. I think basically what he's telling me is get off my bed. This is my bed. But it's not. 
But then, how am I going to air the hallway? I don't know. I don't know how, you know. I suppose I'm going to have to open my front door and leave it open. Which is not what I would normally do. But I can't think of any other way to air out the hallway. Although I'm not sure if there are any fleas in the hallway. And that brings me to another question. Do fleas live in the living room? Um, not in the living room, in the kitchen or in the bathroom? Oh, so many questions. It's like being back at school. Oh, this, this chair, it's not just squeaky. It's falling apart. Seriously, when I lean back on it, because it's a recliner, it clicks. The same way that my back does a, a little bit as well. So I've got a little bit of a lower back uh, issue going on. It's nothing major, just... I think the same thing might be happening to my chair. Maybe that's what it, we've kind of synchronized cycles, but you know, with clicking backs instead of, you know. Periods. So, What was the other thing I was going to talk about? Oh, I had a message from a lady called Molly. I'm not going to read the message out, but I'm just going to say a big hello to Molly. Uh, thank you for your message. Um, it was on WhatsApp. So if you do ever want to send me a message on WhatsApp, uh, just go to my website, jasonnewland.com and there's the contact page and there's ways of contacting me you can contact me by post email, telephone whatsapp, facebook, twitter skype you know, there's lots of different ways to get in contact and uh, so hi to Molly thank you for your message and uh, it was really nice because I woke up. I do that most days. And I just do what I normally do. I get up, I come in and uh, into the living room. I check the stats. That's kind of my morning ritual. Although it's not in the morning. It's in the afternoon. But, you know, I check the stats and... check my phone and I hadn't yeah I hadn't had any phone calls as far no I hadn't I did yesterday or the day before I had a text message from a friend telling me that she was getting married although I didn't realise because she didn't send me any text she sent me three pictures. Uh, I think the first picture was uh, no, actually the first picture was a the, the first bit was a text I've been proposed to. The second picture was uh, like a love heart, or whatever. And the third picture was a bedspread, which she took a picture of and had, "Please marry me." So her boyfriend must have put that on the bedspread. And uh, it's ro more romantic than putting it on toilet paper, isn't it, I suppose? And <laughs> sanitary towels. Imagine that, or hair removal. Imagine that, 
put it on the hair removal bottle. Will you marry me? So I, the thing is, because when I looked at it, I only saw the last picture. And it was an image of, will you marry me? And I thought, oh, I had a little tremble go down my spine, a bit of, and then I skipped up and I saw that she's got engaged. So I, yeah, I said congratulations and I let her know how scared I was when I first saw the picture. So that was quite a nice, nice little start to the day probably not a much nicer start for her but it's a you know it's a positive I know I quite like to hear when people have got good news probably more so now than when I was younger I kind of get a little bit of kick from it a kick from it kick out of it whether it's somebody's been successful in whatever, whatever it is, something that they wanted, or they've they're getting married, or they're they're pregnant and they wanted to be pregnant, or they I don't know won the lottery, or not that I really know anyone that's done that, but um, I just think it's really nice. It's a really nice feeling to know that someone is feeling happy. You know that they've uh, they've accomplished a goal. They've something wonderful has happened. So yeah, I feel quite I quite like that. And so she's she's married she's, she's, no she's not married yet she's getting married um, I wonder if I'll get invited see I don't, well, I don't it's not that I don't like weddings it's just uh, I like weddings in, in, the, in a sense of it's a happy occasion. That, that's lovely. I mean, most weddings I've been to have been really nice, regardless of how big and extravagant they are, or how small and cosy. And I've only been to one really weird wedding. And. Yeah, it was very weird. It literally, I was living in a little town and I was 18, I think, at the time. And I ended up getting in a car with three other people, one being the driver. And he drove over a roundabout. Do you want to go around it? He drove over it and he was drinking a can of lager. So that was a really weird kind of, uh, I said I was very young and I didn't, I would never get into a, car, into a car with someone that was drinking. But at the time I was just like, what on earth is going on? It's like, it's a kind of twilight zone. I had the wedding in the registration office, came back, and I had a party, like a wedding party, at the house of one of their friends. And <laughs> they all were drinkers. I was going to leave it at that. They liked to drink, not just at weddings. In fact, I think some of them forgot it was a wedding. It's just a standard afternoon, I think. But it just all kicked off and they were fighting and arguing. And at one point, I don't know who it was. It was I don't know if 
he was related to them or not, but one of them stood up on the table, which was full of food and cakes, and started to urinate. That was very strange. I haven't seen anything like that since well, Christmas. It was just, I was just like, what on earth is going on? Because, you know, as a child, uh, previous to that, I was still a teenager, but when I was younger, I've been to a few weddings and they all, well, there was no urinators. I didn't know that was part of the process, you know. Something, was it something old, something borrowed, something new, and someone to piss on the table? I mean, I'd, I didn't know. I didn't know that that was going to happen. And then, one of the people, my friend's cousin, who's about the same age as me, or a little bit older, he was there and he got really drunk. And he pushed into somebody, the, the bride, and knocked her over by accident. And he, I think he was arguing with someone. And so I followed him to make sure he was okay because he was all over the place. And we ended up miles and miles and miles away. And, you know, he'd, he'd done about a bottle of whiskey. And I didn't even drink it those days. Or like mildly, I'd have a little bit. And I didn't even know him very well, but I was being Mr. Nice and taking care of him. Because of, you know, what he said, he was just, just the way he was. And it was just really surreal. I vowed from then on. No more weddings for me. But funny enough, and this may surprise you, I have been to a few weddings since then. And none of them have been even similar to that one. trying to think how many weddings I have been to since that time I went to meet auntie's wedding I went to my daddy's wedding his third wedding I went to trying to think during the during my 20s I don't think I got really got invited to many weddings if any actually oh no it was mine of course I got married no I, no, I didn't I never got married so the third one the third one would be well, both my sister and my brother both got married, so I've been to theirs. So these are kind of close family. Who else is wedding? I went to one of my best friend's wedding about eight years ago. So that's five since I left school. There must be more weddings than that. Surely. Hmm. Other weddings. Wedding, wedding. I'm just going through my life. 
oh yeah, there was a wedding. One of my other best friends got married. And that was in 2000 and... I think about 2009. So that's six. And... Um, yeah, I think I went to another friend's wedding, which was about 2000 and maybe 11. So that's seven. What other way? It's all coming back to me now. What other weddings? What other weddings have I been to? To do, 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 do. no, it's all the ones I can remember. So I've been to seven weddings as an adult. I have been invited to weddings that I didn't go to, which is probably a little bit naughty of me. But I just wasn't feeling very well at the time and couldn't kind of face it. Which is a shame because I was invited to my friend's wedding. And um, he was my boss as well for a while at one of the jobs I had. But he was one of the nicest people I've ever known. Also one of the most positive people I've ever known. And he was lovely. And I, I wish I had kept in contact, but I just, yeah, this didn't. So I could have gone. I was invited, but I didn't go. Um. Yeah, I've been invited to a few that I've not gone to. I just like just said I couldn't go, or I didn't go, didn't turn up, or whatever. Not didn't turn up. I wouldn't not like with this one. I didn't with my friends. I was invited to go and have the meal. And when I'm talking about weddings, I'm talking about ones that I've gone and had the meal there and all that stuff. Um, not just going in the evening for the party bit. I've done that a few times. Um, I think. But uh, I did that with one of my clients. Uh, she was, he was a, f basically he was the boyfriend of a friend that I was at college with back in 2003. And they got married in 2006. And I saw him for pain management and stuff for a little while. So I went to their wedding after they got married. So in the evening. Because I didn't really know him well enough. You know, I didn't really know. I didn't have that much contact with her either, really, I suppose. Um, I wonder who else got married. Uh got to be someone out there that got married though I feel one of my best weddings because I, when I was a kid when I was little I went to I think my an aunt's wedding maybe two of my aunt's wedding when I was little and who else? I might have gone along to weddings like the evening with my parents, people that I didn't really know. In fact, I'm pretty sure there's one particular one and I didn't or didn't know, or didn't care, or all I was just interested in was dancing the night away 
to, uh, I forget the group, but they sung, I'm in the mood for dancing, feel like romancing, going to dance the night away, that one. And I used to dance like Shaken Stevens. So yeah, it was very, sometimes I'd, I'd have my head down a little bit too low and I end up kneeing myself in the face, but, and another thing I used to, I used to jump down and land on my knees and then jump up again and be dancing because I wanted to be Shaken Stevens, I really did. And I think I can still feel it on my knees now, all those years later, 40, 42 years later. But I think one of my favouritest weddings was when I was about 14 and I did karate and I was going to the local karate club and I was one of the young uh, yeah one of the youngest there probably and I was obsessed with it I was obsessed with karate and martial arts and one of the high highest grades in there not the instructor but one of the ones that was like his adult and he was um, you know, much higher grade than me. He got married, and he was getting married. And he asked me and another of the karate people kids to stand outside the church holding swords. So I wasn't in the church when they got married because we were getting prepared outside. Well, I'm, to be fair, we might have, I can't remember, we might have sat in the back and watched it. But then we came out, we had our geese on, so our karate suit on, and people are outside already, because they, they go out first, don't they? And the, the wedding people, basically there's a photographer, and we were just standing there. I had a sword, and we were basically crossing swords. And by that, I don't. It's not a a euphemism. That literally was was we did have swords. So I was holding a sword up that was probably as bigger than I was, and he was holding his sword up. And we were crossing it, so they were touching. Um, because we were little. Well, I wasn't very tall. We had. To, it was quite weird, we had to hold them really high above our heads because the man that was getting married, he was tall, he was well over six foot and I was probably about five, I'm five eight now, so I'm not tall now, but I probably at 14, I was probably about five, five probably five, six, you know, it wasn't a lot of difference, but I wouldn't have been my full, full amazing length that I am now. And I remember I was holding it in my hands and just being out in public with it in my hands, just, my hand was trembling a little bit because it was a heavy sword, but you know, had to kind of, I, I was a little bit worried that I'd like, I'd drop it and it'd cut his head off, it'd cut the groom's head off or the, both of their heads, so I was kind of a little bit worried because I, I recognised I was young, but even then I recognised that would be a bit of a dampener on the wedding. And it was in the local newspaper. So there was a picture, and I'd, I'd love to see that picture again because uh, it's such a long time ago, uh, long, long before the internet. So it's it may be archived somewhere, but I'd love to see it. So it's just me and him, me and my, my friend, holding the swords, and I think at one point we were just all covered. We got covered in confetti as they were as well because the confetti was being chucked 
and I think they stood there the idea was that they would pose with us like either side and because my, my karate instructor used to have swords he was a sword fighter well he he trained with swords so he I guess we used his so they were built for adults not for because I was only little really as much very little for my age like very slim very skinny I didn't weigh much I mean when it was windy I had to wear heavy boots so I didn't get blown away so I ended up with very strong legs perfect bum very peachy <laughs> that sounds wrong I don't know why so um, that was probably among my favourite weddings because I was part of it I had an active role in the proceedings and I, I, that's what I like about stuff if I can be actively involved but without having to actually you know sign any kind of contract the television's turned off it's starting to click how ridiculous it doesn't normally turn off on its own I purposely leave it on because it clicks when it's turned off so I put the poor you know the the mute button so that I don't hear all these weird big clicks and stuff in the background oh yeah so today well yesterday I did a let me boy to sleep session and that's my stomach I talked about my stats and I talked about how I was surprised because the last three days it had gone up quite dramatically over the 3,000 mark three days in a row and the pre it was literally like just over 3,000 then 3,200 then 3,600 so it's like those three days and I wasn't sure why I like to think it's because people like what I'm doing, you know. That's a nice thought. But I just wonder how it's what's what's happened to cause it to rise so quickly. It's not that I don't get over three thousand ever because I do but it's just over the month I was averaging for the last like month or two about two and a half thousand a day averaging sometimes less than that sometimes you know a lot more but averaging about two and a half thousand and then suddenly it just goes way above the three thousand and nearly four thousand or 3,690 or something I'm like what's going on well before I start this recording and the day's not over yet the day wasn't over yet with the stats I had over 5,000 downloads to, to yesterday so that's four days in a row where it's been over 3,000 but it's like gone up. This is over 5,000. And I've had a few days over the past where um, I had one where it was like 12,000, 7,000, and stuff like that. But that's an anomaly in the sense of usually when that has happened, it's only happened a couple of times is when I've re-uploaded stuff 
uh, made some changes, something maybe deleted stuff, uploaded new st- stuff, you know, something like that. Made a few changes to the podcast and just ended up having a two or three days where it's been a lot of uploads, a lot of downloads rather. But I've done nothing like that this week. I've only done that twice since November and it only affects the stats for a couple of days this week nothing like that it's just standard making recordings and just you know, sharing them like normal uh, being in the process of building my new website jasonnewland.com it's, it's up and running but I'm still you know working on it Now Andre has decided to wake up and run around, being naughty. I think I might have to start putting him in his cage again. I used to put him in his cage and you know it's in the storage room and then I could do my recordings but over the last couple of months he's probably three or four months he's been living in the living room he's you know and had the full it does whatever he wants What I'm going to do, I'm going to walk into the bedroom and get away from him. Hopefully he'll leave me alone. And I look down at my foot and what's there? It's Andre. I'll go and sit on the bed. Hopefully he'll leave me alone. No, he's not going to leave me alone, are you? He wants to come up and cuddle. Okay, baby. You can have a cuddle with me. So I'm now cuddling Mr. Fleabag. And he's just laying back, completely relaxed. He did say to me the other day, he said, you know what, Daddy? Why do you call your podcast, um, Let Me Bore You to Sleep? I said, what do you mean? What do you mean, son? He said, well, you're, you're the most interesting person that I've ever met. I said, oh, really? And he started laughing out loud and he ran away. He's so rude. You're very rude, you know that. Give me a kiss, kiss. He's a happy boy, but you know, sometimes he just wants to do stuff. And I like the idea of owning like a really big house. Not for me, but just for him. So we can just go exploring. Make sure that it's safe for him, you know, so he doesn't get trapped anywhere. But just have it all so he could just run around and yeah, I can call him. And I'd probably get a friend for him to play with or something. Maybe get a few ferrets. And he could be the king. He could be the, he could be the king of the ferrets in charge of everything because he would be in charge because if I got him some babies he could be their daddy and he could bring them up the way he wants to and he could literally just have the whole mansion to himself I'd live there as well I suppose I'd have one room 
but he'd just come and go and do what he wanted. And I do, I just do think that if he did have that space, you know, loads of different rooms and to be able to do whatever he wants, would he spend any time with me? That's what I wonder. I think he would. I think he'd still want to be where I am. He'd forget about me at times because he gets so, so interested in, in exploring stuff. But then he looks around and he's like, where's daddy? And then he'll find me. Wherever I am, he'll find me. I can never hide from him. He told me it's because he can smell my feet. I think he's just being rude again. At least it's just my feet that smell. Your everything smells. It smells lovely. Yes, it does. I'm stroking the top of his head. He loves it. Just like from his ears. Basically from, from his nose. You know, just past his eyes. The back of his ears. Just stroking. Almost. Oh, he's just happy. His little nose is wiggling a little bit. It's very calm, aren't you? I do think that when I talk to him, um, especially when I'm doing a recording, I think I, th I get the sense that he quite likes it, that it's quite relaxing for him. Because he knows that when I'm making a recording, I can't really tell him off being naughty so he I think he feels he can get away with anything although he pretty much does anyway he likes me um, scratching his ears because he can't get to his ears so what he does is when I do rub his ears he pushes his head against my thumb so that I can really kind of get right in there but I let him do the pressure so it doesn't go too far in. And he loves it. He's doing it right now. He's pushing right against. You like that, do you? Yeah, you do. Wow. Because he can't... He can't scratch inside his own ears. Can you imagine that? Do the other ear as well. You're going to push against that? You're going to push against that? Yes, you are. Yes, you are. You like that, don't you? Yes. Is that nice? Oh. I've never really had... Well, I've never had, a, like, a son before. I've never had, you know... I know people call them pets... For me, although I am petting him now, I guess, which is very therapeutic, and um, he's my boy, and I've never had that before, never had that connection, that, I don't know, it's almost... I suppose it's a bit weird, really. But he's so special. Aren't you special? You my little special Andre. Yes, you are. I'm gonna tickle his tummy. You got a tickle tummy? Got a tickle tummy? So I'm hoping that now that I've done this room and aired it out, it should be okay to sleep in it. And maybe tomorrow I'll do the, I don't know, I suppose I could do the, I could do the living room. 
tonight while I'm in bed and then do keep him in here but this means I won't get much sleep because he'll be scratching at the door to get out he doesn't he doesn't like closed doors I've got a thing about it you're my little boy aren't you yes yes you are yes you are you're a good boy as well you're a very good boy sometimes obviously you're not good all the time otherwise I'd still be sitting in the living room not trying to escape you now he wants to climb all over what I'm doing you behave yourself I'm not well, he wants to get all rough now and bite me stop it stop it stop it so yeah I just um, I looked at the stats and Spotify the the viewing or rather the, the plays downloads on, Spot, on Spotify have really increased so that might be what the jump is what the the, the leap in uh, statistics because Spotify after all is one of the top places to listen to podcasts so that, that might be what it is it's just it's hard to know ow he's biting me now stop it stop it oh now he's not biting himself anymore now he's biting me lovely thanks mate you're a little monkey you're a little little monkey yes you are ow 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 stop it stop it so yeah I'll be interested to see what happens over the next couple of days and a couple of weeks to see if it if it continues to grow like that or you know if it stays the same I mean it's, it's always continually growing that's just uh, the nature of the game isn't it it's because I produce more recordings and people listen to some of the old stuff as well and, um, but I do wonder I mean it's the idea you think 3,000 a day is a million a year so 3,000 downloads a day is a million a year so I'm 1,000 a day off of six, uh, 2 million a year so I, that's find that exciting I think anything with the word million in kind of makes me think oh that's kind of successful Unless, of course, it's like a million fleas and that's not successful, but... Hey, hey, what are you doing? What are you doing? What are you... D ow, ow. It's really weird because ferrets are quite famous for being very um, aggressive. You know, especially wild ones. Very fierce. Um... And when he plays, sometimes he gets a little bit carried away, and I feel it. I really, you know, but he would never purposely hurt me ever. I know that. But he's so strong, so quick. And when I play with him, I'm pretty quick myself, so I can avoid him biting me, even as when it's just even as playing, I can avoid it. But that's not fair on him, because. The whole point is he wants to bite me. I play fighting, so I have to kind of let him, let him grab hold of me and bite me a little bit, because that's part of the fun for him. Otherwise, if I'm just moving my hands really quick all the time, pulling his towel and pushing him over, and it's fun for a little while for him, but he doesn't get anything out of it unless my finger is in, in his in his mouth for. A little bit and he can have a little bite even if he's not you know not trying to hurt me 
Ow. That hurt a little bit. Ow, stop. Oi. Stop it. Stop it. Behave. Behave yourself. Behave. So that's the end of this recording for today. I will be making another one very soon. Probably tomorrow. Ow, 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 ow. So yeah, I think I'm going to put... I'm going to do the next... Yeah, I'm going to do the next canister tonight in the living room. That's what I'm going to do. Or maybe not. I don't know. We'll see how I feel. See how I feel in it. So, yeah, thank you to everyone, if anyone's still awake. Thank you for listening to my podcasts and my recordings, my hypnosis sessions and stuff like that, because it makes it worthwhile for me. And also to get, you know, a message like I did from Molly on WhatsApp. Um, It was lovely, actually. Great. I just bit my bit my wrist. It's a great great start to the day, or great finish to the day. It's it's just lovely. So I shall speak to you very soon. And uh, remember to be kind to yourself. Lots of love.